What's up guys? Welcome back to Polygon Academy. Tim here, and this is part two of the ArtStation Challenge vlog series. In this video, I'll be going over three reasons why the gray box or block out process is critical to the success of any 3D environment. This is a foundational part of the production process and something that you should really invest a proper amount of time in before diving into asset production in order to set yourself up for success down the road. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking, oh Tim, gray box, ah, oh, level layout, that's, that's for level designers, I'm an artist, I just want to make cool art right off the bat. And uh, I can tell you from personal experience that not having a strong gray box layout to build from or to reference or to set up what you need to produce it can really, really hurt you in the, the long run of during a production. Uh, it can leave you not knowing what to work on next or where to focus your time and energy, which can really slow you down or cause you to work overtime or uh, you know have to go back to the drawing board multiple times because something isn't looking right. So it's really important that we hammer out how the scene's going to look and the required asset list during this gray box phase in order to really know where we're going and save ourselves a lot of time during the production process. Gray boxing is an essential skill if you want to be a level designer or a level artist. Even on the art side of things, it's good to know how to design gameplay spaces. That way, during the early phases of production, you can communicate well with the designers to produce something that you both agree on right away, and there's less back and forth. So I would say being having a strong foundation in gray boxing or blocking out environments actually makes you more employable as a level artist. I actually recorded my gray box process in Unreal the other night as a time lapse. So let's hop over to the computer, and I'll go over that and give you my three tips on gray boxing in your environments. So if I hop over to 3ds Max, here's my super cheesy, simple gray box kit that I created. Uh, one for the house, very, very simple. Um, a kit for these uh, sort of retaining walls you can see down here, here that allow you to stagger uh, the different houses or buildings throughout the environment. One for the steps, as I know that they'll be featured pretty prominently throughout the environment where I choose to scatter them. Uh, the Tory gate, right here in the center of the composition. Uh, this is my basic placeholder for a tree. Super amazing modeling, I know. But uh, they are featured all over the concept, so I definitely wanted to throw them in there. This, originally I was going to use for uh, make it green and make it uh, my placeholder for foliage. But uh, I actually ended up using it as uh, my placeholder rock, just scattering it throughout the scene. Super simple like literally a box subdivided with some noise thrown on it. But uh, it works for to, to help me see where the rocks are going to be in the scene. Very easy, don't need to waste time on, on anything more than that. And then these are placeholders for the actual uh, little rubble and uh, little like lanterns and stuff that are scattered throughout the, the, the environment. And then this is just a placeholder for a, a chipped up stone that I'm going to sink into the mud uh, down the central player path to help uh, lead the eye in the composition. Yep, so if I go to the time lapse, we can take a look at that and break it down. So here you can see I started with the, the house. It's the, the key element in the composition pretty much. So I just quickly placed that and uh, yeah, and then I started throwing in those retaining walls and the steps. Very basic, just using that kit. The Tory gate threw in some quick little fences that I'll be breaking later on. Um, just starting to play with the verticality in the environment of those background buildings, staggering them, keeping them uh, not at the same level. I find it's, the composition's more interesting. And uh, that actually throws me into my first point, is uh, focus on layout and composition when you're doing your gray box. Um, and keep it, keep it super, super simple. But uh, you really want to nail down the, the feeling and the, comp the basic composition in your environment. Here you can see I'm placing some rocks and some of those uh, basic clutter from the, the gray box kit. And uh, this actually kind of leads into my second tip, which would be by using the same pieces over and over again. And uh, you can tell how much you actually use them throughout the scene. So you can see I use the walls and the buildings quite a bit. They're probably, they, they take up the most amount of the screen along with the, the trees. That allows you to prioritize your production. So I know I'm gonna to have to, when I create all these assets, where I should start with is probably the largest forms in the environment. So I'm gonna start with the house, then start with the walls, and then work my way down um, through, the, the, through the asset list, down to these little statues. They might be the funnest thing to create, sculpt them up, chip them up, very, very cool. But uh, in reality, they don't take up the most of the screen space. Here you can see I'm throwing in some very, very basic lighting. I'm keeping it dynamic for now. 
Uh, I don't want to waste any time with baking or anything like that. It's easy to get thrown off track by uh, going in and doing little test bakes and tweaking the lighting, but at this phase of the gray box, um, you don't want to be doing that. And so that goes to point three, which is keep it quick and efficient. You don't want to be wasting a lot of time snapping on the grid or trying to figure out your exact modular kits. You just really want to nail that field composition and you, you can go back and make it uh, efficient on the grid and more modular uh, as you go along through the production process. So you just don't want to be wasting a lot of time doing all these very basic things when your kit is still being determined by your actual layout. So those are the three tips. Uh, focus on the layout and composition, which allows you to prioritize your production assets and keep it quick and efficient. So if we hop over to the actual scene, here you can see this is the result of uh, a, you know about an hour's worth of work. Super, super simple. I just use those rocks to actually block the sun and kind of start to get that feel of sun coming through the trees. A very, very basic fog. Um, super, super simple. If I go to a little bit more of the advanced block out, here you can see I've actually expanded the environment, but because it's using the same kit pieces from that modular basic kit that I've, I've created for my block out, I know it's gonna be more of the same assets and that way I can actually expand the scope of my scene, but I'm not too intimidated by the fact that it's gonna add a lot more work because it's all the same assets just reused. So the basic final composition I want is to go up through this kind of broken staircase into this uh, village that opens up a little bit more into a, an actual, feels like an actual gameplay space. So you can see I've just taken those rock meshes, tinted them green, thrown them up into the air to get the feeling of the, the canopy kind of creating this oppressive vibe that's above you. Very, very simple stuff. And added some basic colors just to kind of help start blocking things in. Keeping it very simple, but this way I know all the assets I need to produce. Given the amount of uh, times that they're used, I know that the houses, the walls, and uh, the trees are gonna be super, super important to, to focus my energy on. And then just literally work my way from big to small. And if I go back to my max file, you can actually see I've kind of already organized things in the order that I'm gonna produce them. House, the walls, the tree steps and tour gate, then uh, the rocks, and then finally these smaller props. So yeah, while these might be the funnest to do, they're definitely not the most important um, because if you waste, say, half your production time on these, it's not gonna make a very cool environment, but you might be able to get away with something with, with these few assets. In, uh, if you were into a time crunch. So it's all about focusing your time where the, you know, the biggest payoff is gonna come from during the production process. And finally here, if I hit the play button and go into game mode and run around, you can see it's actually starting to feel kind of like a gameplay space. So run up here into the village. Here would be probably the golden path. That door would probably be openable or something like that if it was a game uh, with maybe some little side items up here or something like that. So the concept, yeah, the concept feels a little bit more claustrophobic, but I think once I start to add, the, add in the foliage and extra scattered rocks and rubble and ruins, it'll start to really tighten in the space naturally. So I'm giving myself a little bit of wiggle room there. But yeah, very basic block out, but I, now I know exactly all the things I need to basically get it to an alpha or a beta state. Um, and then I can spend any extra time I have left polishing, adding little props, uh, and then detailing, detailing it to, the, to an extreme level of quality at the end. But uh, by focusing on these, on these few main assets, I know I can probably reach that, uh, that alpha and beta state pretty quick, and that gives me more time at the tail end to, to polish it and get it really up to that AAA quality of, of uh, final pro end product. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And now maybe you have a little bit more context of why the gray box process is so, so important and why I really stress investing quite a bit of time in it before you really dive in and start creating art. I just wanna say a huge thanks to everyone who's left comments and uh, supported the videos so far. The, the feedback has been really, really awesome. Everyone seems to be digging it and I'm gonna try and keep these a bit shorter so they're easy and digestible and you still get some good pieces of information as we go along. Finally, if you're liking the content so far, smash that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment saying what helped you in this video the most out of all the tips. That would be really, really awesome and I would really appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.